In this video, we're going to talk about the five biggest mistakes that I see property developers and self-builders make. Now you might be thinking it might be just new people to the industry, but I even see seasoned professionals making some of these mistakes. Hi. My name is Jim J. Davidson and I'm a property developer. I first got involved in property in 1973 at the age of 16 when my brother and I purchased a flat in the student area of Edinburgh. My current company, Fineside Developments, was established in 2003 and we completed our first new build in 2006. This channel is really dedicated to providing you some of the things that I have learned along the way. I'm not an expert. I don't profess to know everything, but what I do know, I hope, will help you on your property journey. The first one can be land. You see, all land is not the same and can't be treated as equal. It's very different from purchasing a house because a lot of these things have already been addressed. When you look at a piece of land, it can all look the same, but perhaps underneath there are some implications. Maybe there's archaeological remains. Uh, that can have a cost implication. Maybe there is a huge void of space which then needs to be filled with concrete. Or perhaps its power needs to be brought to the site. There might be a power right beside your site and you think it's okay, but it doesn't have the capacity to service your development, even a single house. And it has to be brought across a field and, and therefore there's a huge cost implication. There are many different cost implications in a piece of land. Depending on where it's located could be another cost implication. Does the local houses have a slate roof or does it have a concrete tile? Slate's going to be much more expensive to basic uh, in terms of material costs, in terms of labour costs. So you need to be aware of those things. There is a list that I created, a checklist that I created a number of years ago, and I'll soon be updating this. But if you want to get a hold of it, there'll be a, a link in the description below. But I'm just showing you right now a copy of that list. The second mistake is people often don't know how to value land. And they call in a surveyor. I have found that many surveyors and estate agents don't know how to properly value a piece of land. So let's look at this. Because it's quite a simple uh, process actually in reality. The value of the land starts in reverse order. In other words, what is the house that you are going to build or houses that you're going to build be worth at the end of the day? So let's assume for ease of numbers is going to be 400,000. That that's going to be the end price of the, of the house itself. Now, in order to build that house, a developer needs to make a profit. Now, if you're a self-builder, you might be thinking, ah, I don't need to be making this profit. Well, I'll come to that a little bit later because the reality is you should. It's just how you spend that profit that differs. So typically, in the range of about 25% is what the profit that you would make need to make out of the build on that piece of development land. Now, there is a slight caveat there because if you buy raw land and gain planning permission on it, then you're definitely going to exceed that 25%. So we're just simply talking about a piece of land that has uh, perhaps full planning, building warrants, building control, uh, regulations, all satisfied. And you could buy it on the Friday and start building on the Monday. Uh, so to actually build the house, we're going to say that you are going to make a profit of 100,000. And now we come to the actual build cost. And we won't get into the semantics of how you determine what the build cost is, but let's just say for sake of argument that this build is going to cost us 200,000. So that's the build cost. So assuming that that build cost covers absolutely everything, then you simply have the residual land price which is going to be then worth 100,000. Now a surveyor may come along 
and say that this piece of land is worth 150,000. Well, if it's worth 150,000, there's only one place that that can eat into, and that's your profit. And therefore, that then drops to being not 25%, but drops to being 12.5%. And that would be too risky for a developer to undertake. Because one of the reasons that the margin, which might seem very large to you, is it covers something going very badly wrong. And it can in development, let's be honest. And so there can be things that even if you've, you've factored in all the costs, you can, once you start actually digging into the ground, you can discover things that you just didn't discover in your uh, initial appraisal of the development. So now we come to the third mistake, which is often people don't understand the difference between outline planning and full planning. So if we imagine that we have a piece of ground here, and we'll assume that this is just a single build house, and that's your piece of ground, a nice square plot that you can build a house on. If you go for outline planning, what you're simply saying is, I want to build something on here. And um, so my structure, um, and depending on what your actual planning authority determines, um, it will determine how much of this land, the footprint of this house can take of the total land. In the area which I work in, they will allow no more than one third of the, the, the site to be taken up by the building. And there's all sorts of other regulations in terms of parking spaces, depending on the number of bedrooms, um, places for um, having uh, your, your waste bins, your recycling bins. Um, and so when I, and when I say footprint, that doesn't mean to say that if this was, um, let's say 900 square meters in size, that you could, um, yeah, if, if, let's say this was 900, which is a very big plot, of course. Let's say this was 900 square meters in size, then the footprint could be 300 square meters. Uh, but that doesn't mean to say that you'd have a 300 square meter house. You could actually have a two-story house providing the regulations and, and the local vernacular will it allow that of, say, 600, which is, of course, a very, very big house. Um, so the proportions that I've used there are probably not realistic, but nevertheless, you get the concept. So with outline planning, that's essentially what it says, but it doesn't say all the different requirements for that. And so detail planning or full planning requires that you specify everything. You just specify the design of the house and therefore they will ask lots of more questions in terms of the house. There'll be more reports that you have to, to give. Um, there will be more investigation before they're going to like to, to give you planning approval. And of course, it's a subjective um, uh, thing as well. So um, even though um, you've got, uh, even though you put in an application, it doesn't guarantee that you are going to get uh, planning approval. And so therefore, when purchasing a piece of ground and it's got outline planning, there are further cost implications in that. And yet you will very often find that surveyors will price the house at the same price, whether it's got outline planning or full planning. And yet the full planning can cost thousands, if not tens of thousands of pounds to achieve. And therefore that should be factored in as we talked about in the previous example, when we talked about the build cost, those costs would need to be factored in there to determine what the real price of your piece of land is. The fourth area is the design of the building itself. So let's assume that you go for a very simple design and the cheapest to build would be a square or rectangular. Um, so you've got basically four turns on the actual building itself. As soon as you start to do a variation on that, you add to the cost. So let's assume that you had perhaps a bit that comes out the back here. Then you've increased the actual complexity of design. Not only have you increased the complexity of the design in terms of the layout, 
if you look at the roof, the roof may have been simply, you see I won't get any prizes for drawing, um, but let's say it was just a straight roof. Well, now that you've incorporated that, you've got actually now a more complicated roof. In the roof itself, the cheapest way to design would be a fl it would be the, the roof and you wanted to put maybe lights in, let's say it was a one and a half story uh, building and you wanted to put a window in upstairs. The cheapest way would be to put in a Velux window or a skylight window, uh, but you may think that's not particularly attractive and you want to put in perhaps a dormer window and as soon as you start doing that, then again, you are starting to add to the complexity. Each thing that you add into this basic box will add to the complexity of the building. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that, but you need to be aware of that in the design process. And you need to get very much involved in the design process. It's been my experience that there are architects in two different camps. There are those who are very conscious about the cost implications of design and those that want to create the thing of beauty that stamps their authority and their message on that building. And while they may pay lip service to you that they're going to incorporate your ideas, they often don't and they design something with no cost with no cost idea uh, involved in it. In other words, they don't really understand, and you would think they would, the cost implications of the different things that they're doing. I was speaking to a self-builder about six months ago, and they had built a house, and they were told that they could build this house for about 800 pounds a square meter. The house ended up costing them 1600 pounds or more I think uh, per square meter almost in fact double the price the architect just didn't have a clue on the cost of the, the how much it would cost to build that house and yet a highly experienced architect who has built many or, or he's designed many houses and been involved in the build process himself in some of those houses and yet he gave them a figure that was totally unrealistic for the design of this house. They have a beautiful house, let's make no mistake about it, but it was certainly never going to be achieved for 800 pounds a square meter. So you really need to be involved in the design process and understand the implications of every element that goes into that and how that's going to affect your costs. And so the fifth one that we're going to talk about is to do with the finishings of your house. Now, if we go back, um, we look at um, this profit here that we talked about previously. And I said that if you're a self builder, that you may want to spend some of this profit. Uh, because when you're actually assessing the value of your piece of land, um, you can't expect uh, um, the person who owns the land to pay for some of the maybe more extravagant finishes. Now I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't have those things but here there is a divergence between property developers and self builders. Uh, a property developer I would encourage to have a good standard, you want to be far better than the mainstream property developers um, in terms of, or house builders should I say, because they're not really property developers, they're house builders. Um, most, the reason why most people go down the self build route is because of the awful um, buildings that these uh, mainstream developers or, or, property, or house builders build. Um, as a more individual property developer, I always aspire to produce a far superior product to that. Um, but nevertheless, um, we're maybe not going to do it to the same standard as a self builder would. So within your house, um, you have maybe some different choices to make. And these have a significant impact on your uh, finished development. So let's assume, for instance, that you have a kitchen in there. As a property developer, you want to put in a good standard kitchen but you're probably not going to put in marble con uh, countertops. 
Uh, depending on, of course, on what area it is and the, and the type of house that you're building, you may want to put marble countertops in there, but it just really depends. As a self-builder, you may desire that, and there may be lots of different gadgets that you want to put in the kitchen. If you are perhaps putting in a staircase, and a straight staircase, and I did a video on this last week, so I won't go into too much detail. A st straight staircase is going to be the cheapest type of staircase, but let's assume that the staircase has a turn in it, and therefore um, that is going to be a more expensive staircase to install. Um, it might come with just a simple white wood and to be painted, or if you maybe go for an oak, then that's going to push up the price. Again, depending on what sort of spec that you're looking to achieve, that again is going to be a cost implication. Um, you go into the bathroom, and uh, let's say you've got your bathroom here, um, then in terms of, of what goes in there, you may decide to tile the bathroom, um, but you, as a self-builder, you might decide to entire, uh, tile the entire walls of the, the bathroom. As a developer, you may be deciding to do a smaller amount of tiling. Um, there's a cost implication there, obviously, in terms of the, the material cost, but also the laying cost. Um, currently, I, my tiler charges about £30 a square metre, so you can see there's quite a significant cost involved in there in addition to the tiles. Um, so if the tiles maybe cost you 10, 15 pounds a square meter, then you're talking about 45 pounds per square meter, every uh, square meter that you lay. And there are also some additional costs to that. Um, so that's something to be aware of. The finishes inside your house will have a cost implication. But also there's another area which is often forgotten is the area around your house. Um, and depending on what the regulations are in your area, even though as a self-builder you might say, well, I'll do the landscaping at some point in the future, there's going to be certain ha hard landscaping requirements require. So for instance, again, in the area that I build, uh, build in, uh, we have to have dis disabled access. Um, and that means that the, the entrance up to the house has to be level going into the house and it has to have a certain gradient um, so that so so the actual entrance then is easily accessible by a wheelchair, and that gradient then has to lead to somewhere that that somebody who is in a wheelchair can get out of a car and be able to then uh, uh, take themselves to the entrance of the house, and so that means certain amount of la hard landscaping being introduced into the entrance of your house where wherever that is, so. It's often a cost and it's quite significant that people often forget. Now I've labeled these the five biggest mistakes. Are they the five biggest mistakes? It really depends on your development. But I wanted to give you some indication that you require to pay attention at least to these five. And if you got any one of them wrong, that could have a significant impact on your development. Get all five wrong and it could be absolutely disastrous. If you're new to the channel, I would appreciate it if you subscribe. It always encourages me to make more videos and lets me understand that this is of value to you. And remember, our app is now coming out in the next few weeks. If you haven't already subscribed to that, um, there's a link in the description box below. There's also, if you're on desktop, a link in the YouTube header, which is that side. Um, and so click on the link and uh, come and join us in the app. Uh, there's lots of free content going to be in there and lots of help on your property journey and I look forward to seeing you inside that app and I also welcome you as a subscriber to this channel. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos, then click to watch the next video. Please remember to visit our website at builditandprosper.com to get our app or click on the button on the YouTube header if you're on desktop.